All right. Well, I promised to share with people some of my sources today. So let me tell you, take a look at this, okay? Every day, I go about in my browser looking at things, and I bookmark. So for those of you, if you ever go to dell.eco.us, so it's delicio, but it's D-E-L dot I-C-I-O dot U-S. If you go there, search pack stereo. If you, or if you want a quick shortcut, just D-E-L dot I-C-I-O dot U-S slash P-A-X stereo, P-A-X-S-T-E-R-E-O. You will get to our bookmarks where you can find where we collect information. We actually publish this about what we're reading, what we're looking on, so you can see, get an idea. So here's an idea of just Vic. I'm a, you can see here of stuff I've been looking at. For one, uh, Honda, noted for their wonderful quality of cars. Mm -hmm. Their latest car, the Honda Civic, has been rated by consumers as really mediocre. They say they did a big turnaround and dropped off the charts. Wow. <laughs> oh, okay. That is not good. Not you, yeah. So Honda's scrambling. Because mm. they don't like that. You know, Honda's known for having, you know, the top-rated cars. Right. But I show you this because, again, as we pull these topics, these are the kind of things that cross my mind that I don't necessarily, necessarily discuss. Um, Cuba now starting to sell out trips. Uh, people are trying to sell trips to Cuba because the government's relaxing travel issues, but hasn't really totally opened it all the way up. <laughs> so it, they're getting a little premature, but unauthorized trips to Cuba are actually selling out. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> and they're not totally authorized yet. Okay. Now, is this, has, this has anything to do with sometimes your leadership eventually gets old and passes on, and they just get ready for the transition because, you know, you can't live forever if you know who I'm talking about. No, you can't. Yeah. So. But that's, that's what's the kind of stuff that we get. And so every time I book these so that you can find the news and stuff that we're taking on. Now, lately, yesterday, uh, you guys, bunch of mail. You know, you know. Okay, Do you, I need to get hear this from people. Are we are we supposed to criticize the president? Because here's the thing. You know, a lot of black folks. You know, I, for those of you who haven't noticed, I am of African American descent. Yeah, yeah. You may not have noticed. I know. That's right. It's, but you know, it's sometimes it's that lightning creeps. <laughs> <laughs> you, should, you, should, you should tell them about your heritage, man. Not only African-American. That's true. I'm not only African-American. I am one-fourth Chinese. My grandfather's name was Wong. That's we right. Wong. That's right. One of those few Chinamen who married a black, well, let's just say he had a black. Together they came up with children. <laughs> you you can't even explain it, man. Right? I can't. <laughs> I don't want to get into all that dirt. As you know, being who we are, black folks, we are wonderful pedigree. Mixtures of one foot. We're all about <laughs> diversity and programs of incentivizing. Everybody loves right. every rainbow coalition That's in right. the house. That's My right. mom is half Chinese, and when you look at her, you know you you wonder what it is. She. <laughs> <laughs> you talking about your mama, man? I'm just saying. You, you know, talking about your mama. Black folks have all those mixtures. You know, I can't believe you put your mama on blast. I'm just saying when they first meet it, they're like, "Damn, the people, wow!" And they look, then they start looking at me and say, "Okay, that's why your nose so small." <laughs> I said nose and whatever. <laughs> well, I no comment, man. I'm leaving it alone. You know I'm leaving stuff alone. Hey, but you know what? I'm gonna let you see. I'm gonna let you ride because obviously the president is on your mind right now. Well, I brought that up because people were writing, and I wanted to get some feedback. You know, because I don't know how our, our people feel. First of all, let, let's all acknowledge as black folks. Let's be clear and upfront. African Americans? Okay, that too. As Negroes. <laughs> oh, Negros, African Americans? I want to include everybody. That so, we are ev so I'm going to include black folks, <laughs> African Americans, Negroes, niggas. What about, all co what about colored folks? Colored folks. Okay. I'm going to include the whole gamut, the whole milieu. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And I'm going to say, you know, we all were kind of, were happy to have African American president, we were. I mean, Very proud. I don't know about you guys. We went out to the clubs that night yes, sir. to cut, get video. We got a number of people responding, included uh, 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 from the Fifth Dimensions. Oh yeah, yeah. I can't remember her name. You know, uh, I can't remember her name, man. I can just say she's she's one one of the fifths. <laughs> a number of stars were out there that night that we went out to celebrate, getting everybody's opinion about the new president. Yeah. And so I think we certainly wanted to have, have been very proud to finally achieve that day. Many of us did not think we would see that day within our lifetime. Okay, we just didn't. But now that we have this president, 
you know, uh, it hasn't been. Now, let me just tell you, I'm a long-time leftist. You know, I went to Howard. You know, first of all, everybody black <laughs> in the 60s was damn near leftist because you had to be. Government was kicking your ass and killing us. <laughs> you had to damn near pick up a gun. Many right. people did. Right. Okay, we don't need to go there right now, but let's no. just say there was a civil rights movement and a lot of ass was kicked. Yes. And a lot of people paid tremendous dues to allow this. Yeah. So I came up with that mentality in mind. You know, most of my life I've been at war with my government in a way or not, you know, certainly never trusting them mm. at all mm. to do anything correct or right for anything about black people ever anywhere in the world, okay? All right, just the way I came up. And that's the way the experience was. Times have changed. But I'm not so sure that all the parts are changed. In fact, I'm actually sure they're not. We said before, many of us who were of that leftist ilk, that any black person they found who would run for president was not to be trusted anyway. Like, like you can't find a brother right. who will do this, right. who will play this role. And that was the debate. But, you know, we were so proud of Barack Obama, the things he said the ways he spoke, the way he represented. We were so proud of him that people jumped behind the campaign. Friends of mine were up in the morning, big headed early. Right. Over to the po you know, over to the campaign centers to raise the work for him. I right. mean I, I used to see I'm telling you, a bunch of my friends, people got out and worked for him. And I know them personally. Right. Okay, who were busting butt every day to try to get this man into office. Now the question comes up, how do you feel? Mm -hmm. How do you feel? Because there are those of us, and I, you know, who say, "Well, you were stupid to ever believe in it." Because I, I put it like this: I have a buddy of mine who says, "Listen, Mario, to be president, you got to sit in a room with some people that you wouldn't like and say the right things. You bet. If you don't say those right things, you don't even get to run." Right. And he says, "Don't think that Barack didn't say those right things." Right. Okay. He sat in that room and said the right things to the right people. And then there's also the same people pointed out to me, notice how anyone who runs for public office who's black has to publicly dress down black folks, but never can publicly criticize white folks. You've never heard Obama criticize anything about America, right. America's racism, the policies, never, not once. He won't do it, okay? But you've heard him dress down black people about what we need to do, what's wrong with us. Right. But never in those same speeches will he ever imply that some of the things that's wrong with us right. were done to us. Right. Just won't happen because politically, you can't be a black president and show any allegiance whatsoever to your blackness. You actually have to kind of. The only time you can show blackness is when you say wonderful hip sayings <laughs> with, with rhythmic with rhythmic kind of movements. Yes, we will overcome. Yes, that's when you do your black stuff. <laughs> but it comes down to some paper. So. Here we are today, and that was going to be the focus because it is Conspiracy Wednesday. Oh, so that's what today is. It always Conspiracy oh, Wednesday. Oh, I'm thinking you're lecturing. Well, I try I'm not to. I'm, I'm sitting up I here. I was putting stuff aside for quick. <laughs> so we, we go need, to president. Well, we need to raise this issue about because everybody's talking about this debt limit. Half the people I know don't even understand it, and not even half. 90% of people don't even understand what's this whole thing about. And the people who do understand, most of them to me are miseducated. <laughs> they actually right. think, they talk like they know what they're talking about. Right. But it really has nothing to do with this. Like no one did, told you before us, you would rarely hear that there's been 108 uh, debt limit raising. They raised it. They raised it eight times during the Bush administration. I just have one question. Did anybody got, get to, like, number two and say, raise the flag? Number four, raise the flag. Number six, raise the flag. I said, I, I think it's always the same as it's always been. The urgency of people politicking at the advent of a political election always repeats itself. And they are worse scenarios. Sure. And mm -hmm. I always remember, I, sure. my age comes from that. I remember that everybody, the United States is running out of gas. Right. Two hour gas lines. Right. All right. Now, right. and the indictment was is that people are now having fights because they can't get gas. Now we got gas everywhere, right? Oil? <laughs> what happened? So, under that presidency, what was that? Jimmy Carter? Was it Carter, Ford, Menon? Yeah. Okay. How bad is bad? Bad is only counts when you're in it and you're on the bad side. Well, you're on the winning side. Well, nothing matters. Uh, now, here's the thing, and I'm looking at the chat room. This is where I agree with some of the people. Being a black man, see, there's a part of us, we just want to have a black president because we love, let's agree we love black folks, okay? <laughs> now, we, a lot of us love other folks, I mean, we're not, only black folks, right? 
But you know, that is our group to which you are accustomed. Right. And all that. And so, no, for many of us, and I try to explain this to some of my white friends too, when you go as long as we have with the kind of struggles we have, this is part of it. When they had black folks on the TV, you know, black folks will tell you, people will scream, black people on TV, black people on TV. Everybody in the house will come running, wouldn't they? Come, yeah. blah, 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 blah. Where, where, where? Black people on TV. See, we're so desperate. <laughs> right. We're so desperate to have something, you know. That's why when Bill Clinton played the saxophone, that's all we, he had to do. But wait, Black wait, people lined wait, up to I vote. Got, I got a question. Oh, look at him. He played the I saxophone. I got a question. Is it an indictment on the value of what we need to know and how the system works? Or should we just appreciate that, hey, look, we just need to see that it's a reflection of us. Knowledge is king. And how much knowledge continues to grow That's within true. you, and you have to get past That's that as true. an individual first. Well, yeah, because this is the thing. I don't want to pick fights. I want to build coalitions. See, and it's not my issue with the president was to put pressure because ultimately, even though we may disagree, I try to say, let's remember what we want. We want the best things for folks, right? Black people and folks in All general. All around, it's not just a yeah. black thing. Yeah, it's, it's not. not just we, that. And, and if you help the world, it's going to end up helping mm -hmm. black people. Right. My issue, though, is is that I'm a little irritated, and it comes across in my tone because just a little bit of part of me sort of was starting to believe. Right. Just for a second. You let just a little bit of the guard down. <laughs> just a little. And you just try to believe a little bit. <laughs> and it turns out to be bullshit. Now, Vic was all the time, dude, he's just a black man who got elected, man. He's going to be the exact same. <laughs> I said, no, 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 man, no. I said, I know it's going to be the exact same, but maybe, you know, he might sneak up. You know, because, you know, the part of the trickle-down theory, and this is so much related to our slave mentality, we wait for some crumbs. It's just look how it sounds. Trickle down. Here we are waiting by the master's table for just a breadcrumb to come off the edge. Oh, thank you, master. We're so happy. We're so happy to get anything that we'll go out and have a party. Like I said, Bill Clinton played the saxophone. You would have thought he had been shit. Black folks came from everywhere. I'm sorry. I don't mean to chew while I'm I'm just trying to say it. you guys should I I'm just you guys think I should leave him alone because or not because mm -hmm. my thing is I I you you saw how I ripped into Bush administration mm -hmm. and Cheney. You mm -hmm. guys saw oh, yeah. you were with me I ripped into Oh them. no, you had Ch a Cheney field day. That's right. But and I'm on your side. I'm just saying at what point do we go like man, it's not working out for us because black people, you guys, we're in a terrible state. Our uh, all these things affect us more. Well, well, more, yeah, unemployment, when has it, more unemployment, more unemployment, all of that. Hey, look, there was the dead zone. I call it the dead zone. You know what the dead zone is, Mario? The dead zone is when you occup occupy a time between. I call it the tween. Between this point and this point. Our, <laughs> we don't well, laugh. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm looking at my chat room. I know. And I'm, I'm thinking my, well, some of my people, okay, because you guys, some of my black friends get irritated with me. They hate for me to criticize the president and publicly, but I'm going, you guys, if we don't do this, if we don't do this, we're like right. shirking in our duties. Right, wait. wait I'm trying Mario. to make, we want things better for you. No, Mario, let me for say you. this. For you. Wait, wait, watch this. That's why I sit there and say teachers have all the credit in the world. They say in the room where I teach, there are 30, 35 students. How many of them are really going to do the best they can from this point forward? And you know this. You were a student, okay? Now, let's see how focused you was in high school. And uh, were you the one? He says, oh, Mario Hemsley's going to be. No, please. <laughs> see, okay. now, see, you. it's an please, individual please, thing. Please don't bring up what kind of high school <laughs> student you were. I was. <laughs> see? I got suspended seven times. See what I'm saying? Between the eighth grade and 12th. All this time, he could have been I, getting his political knowledge base I on. I and grow up. I ain't going to lie. No, please don't get the impression that Mario did it right, okay? <laughs> see? Uh-uh. That would be a miss. It's the dead zone. Your boy. It's the tweener. Your, your boy right here. I Me ain't too. Lying. I, I mess. I, I have my... Mario, when I say this, I say, you go all these decades or these years and you go, okay, now it's important to me at this time. Because, right, that, we, I, and I did get in some trouble. Not bad trouble, but, you know, police love to jack us up. I I was around the corner shooting 10 cans with my BB gun one day with some of my friends. Wasn't supposed to have a BB gun, right? Right. We went down to the store, paid an older boy to buy the BB gun. Right. We out there shooting 10 cans. Here come LAPD, look, y'all. 
you would have thought it was the Sibonese <laughs> 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 Liberation Army. Man, here come the police just rolling in, shotguns, all kind of shit. The whole neighborhood went crazy. Right. And that's when I got to experience the whole thing of leaning on the car for 20 minutes till your arm's about to fall off. Right. And even walking to the car, the police didn't think I was walking fast. So they, I guess I was the biggest one. So they just whacked me upside the back. Wham, move along, move along, wham. Yep. And had me up on the car like that. Rested us. Did you know for shooting BB guns? They went and saw they was BB. They didn't care. Oh, you niggas don't even need to be living up here. Yep. And that's, that's exactly what they told us. That's right. Put the handcuffs and put me in jail. So, I was made a radical <laughs> by default. <laughs> you had no choice. I mean, just growing up here, people remember, y'all who are young enough, let me tell you something. Brothers used to be, walk, we used to be walking to parties, right? Police would pull up, oh, yeah. tell you to lay Always. on the sidewalk. Always. In man. your party clothes. Lay on the ground. Here you are on your latest disco, whatever. Not even disco, then big afro. Now disco. you got leaves all in your afro. <laughs> twigs and shit. <laughs> Laying on the ground, and the police say, "Okay, you can go." Well, what did you? you what? <laughs> I said you could go. So you don't even talk back to the police. You're right. You can't. You, <laughs> you could. end up in a ditch somewhere. It was silent. So I'm just saying. So if you wonder, you say Mario's too too radical. It's not that I'm radical. It's that I had the black experience that most of you had. The same one. Every black man I know been jacked by the police. That's right. Every single one. Yep, it's not. It, it, look, okay, what but, the hell is it? Okay, but now, now let's keep it in now, perspective. I'm saying so. The keep president didn't change any right. of this. But what? But you Cocaine, have ten you times. Have, you have champions uh, of African American history, not only African American history that you refer to, even in the times that's far worse than this time. They were accomplished. They took it upon themselves. They were champions, and you refer to them all the time. Yeah, I have my black heroes. See, and, and I and the this, this statement. I'm not, but the president ain't on that list. I was, <laughs> I'm trying to rescue no. <laughs> my mom. See, you know, because I know black folks today tell the truth. Y'all go to the house, they got Obama shrine. <laughs> picture, big old picture of Obama, some candles and shit. <laughs> Don't worry. What the hell is Which, that? <laughs> they got, you go over to the house, they got like candles, Obama pictures, some flowers. Wait a I'm like, what the hell is this? Is the man gone or something, y'all? <laughs> And then my mother's like, well, give him a break. I said, Mama, I'm still mad at her over Clinton. She, the one, my mother told me, if you don't vote for Bill Clinton, you're going to be making the way for the other people. So I suck it all up. <laughs> this is Mario's and new shrine. voted for Bill Clinton. <laughs> and now my, my mom. Mario's new shrine. <laughs> all right. So that's the thing of today. I'm glad at least my, my I look at the chat room. My people know I care about them. I'm only complaining because I care about us. Right. Because, and the people out there, you guys. And because internet television, I think it's our duty to demand these things. But, hey, know that we're on the list of, <laughs> of right. we're not on the friendly list. Right. No, no, look, I, I tell everybody, you know, I, I say this, Mark. I say, when you decide to go into politics at a young age, I don't think everybody's totally naive about it. I think they actually say, you, you know, if you want to dance with the, I, hey, let me say it this way. I don't mean all politicians are like this, but see, you want to dance with the devil. You know, how would you know how to get in there in the ring? You got to know how they operate and you can't avoid it. So I, I agree with you. We had an assemblance of hope that something was squeezed through and everybody gets branded. A president gets branded by something he accomplishes. And we hope that he has something that he can stay with his name as an accomplishment. And you're hoping that. Will it happen before this election? Well, that's what I'm saying. You, you know what? The, this is the best claim to fame. This is, I have this discussion. The best thing I can say about the president is he seems to be better than the Republican candidate. <laughs> wait a minute. Just <laughs> wait. So you? So okay, we taking the lesser evils. He seems to be better than the Republican candidate. Uh, well, Michelle Bachman is an idiot. <laughs> See, see. <laughs> These people are just some I, of them are just stupid. I'm just okay, saying. they don't need to go back to their books. Mm. The other Republican, like Boehner, I call him Boner. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole thing is, is a dog and pony show. I like what Mac McAllister said in the piece we played yesterday. Mm -hmm. All right, so you guys go take a look at it. So that was the whole thing. I had to do that today because it's all this debt talk, and you know they're still talking about it. Yeah. How many of you are tired of it? And they still have. Uh, let me tell you guys what's the truth. What and this is, if you go take a look, this is kind of the bottom line. Right. The country economically is on a pyramid. Yes, it's always. It is going to crash. Yes, it's just like the old pyramid you see. Yeah. You keep increasing this credit limit because, and remember, because the Federal Reserve Board, who most of you don't even understand how it works, I know I don't. 
Yeah. It's a private. Yes. Our money in this country is backed up by a private organization, right. the Federal Reserve, privately it's owned. A, it's a corporation. Privately owned. Right. It's a, okay. Yeah. So, what does that mean? All I can say is the, the government is about to. If there's going to be a crash, it's what side of the fence you right, want to reside right. on. And it the really people is. and the haves and all this time that has been so terrible. One percent of the U.S. population has quadrupled their wealth. Yeah. So there are certain people who are buying up everything. Right. Okay. While we're struggling. Well, now let me ask you something. While we're hitting this, because it's for everybody. If you know now what you could have known earlier about the system and how it works, what would you have done different as an individual as it goes towards your career and everything? Because I always say, what you, would I have done? Dealing? Yeah. What would you have I done? I might have just become a drug trafficker. <laughs> it looks like that's the safest thing today. See, see. Perhaps we should all went into see, organized crime. See, see. I could have had Norman in Cleveland, <laughs> and they would have been so well dressed. Norman, I know and, and we would have had G the best <laughs> crime squad. And you had G Mac, in, G in in with the boat. Mac Drop would come off. in dressed like right. the Mac. He would have had the full pimp outfit <laughs> coming in and forcing. Where is and we would recruit. Now we got some Pittsburgh recruits. Right, too. meet at Three Rivers. Let's meet at Three Rivers. Everybody meet up on a boat. We'll use Mac boat. Cleveland, okay, Norm, hey, just as long as it's not a cold wet weather meeting, we cool, man. We cool. So, but Mario, I'm no, just... If Norman can hang with Cleveland, I'm down. I'm just going to fly in and eat. But don't worry, Norman, if I ever get to Cleveland, if I ever get to Cleveland, I'll warn you ahead of time because I will take you to eat. <laughs> See, we have so, to, If we can just get some money, we might visit some people. I, dude, I was saying... I, I want to go out and eat. I want to go up to Port Thompson and walk I, on the hey, damn... I, dude, on the boat. I'm going like this. I said, he's on the boat. Man, I'm, 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 I'm on the water. Right. So anyway, you guys, that's my rant. I, I love to support my chat people. They know I'm not hating. They know I'm not hating. They know I'm really concerned about our people. I, I, I got friends who so are stressed, so stressed out with searching for jobs. I got friends yeah. who've been out of work, trying hard desperately. And has this not happened in our history before? It has. So at this point, Mark, that's why I said, Mario, if you, if you had to pick something, I know you said you'll be you know, will be iceberg slim, and I know you'll be a drug trafficker, but wouldn't you change? I would be a pimp. <laughs> I like the fringe benefits. <laughs> That'll get me in trouble. <laughs> what, Mario? Oh, I would be a nice pimp. Man, One of those God. kind pimps. Those, right. They would call me Mario the Smiling Pimp. Right. <laughs> I, hey, I'm going to tell everybody. I'll say this. If you want to get a snapshot <laughs> of how the system can run, it's not maybe 100% accurate. If you have it, go watch Too Big to Fail. Because oh, it doesn't, right. You're right. doesn't deal with the average consumer as it relates to the rescuing them. It's about them preventing failure. And when you go see that, you go, okay, now you notice the system always bounced back. It always bounced back. It's just how many people lose it. And when a certain amount of people lose, they say people win. There are what they call shareholder investments in companies that fail. So that means they work both sides see, of the fence. That's right. Well, I'm with you, Vic. Yeah. I'm with you. Tell we got to make a change because all of this does affect people. You know, TMC uh, was just saying he was laid off three times. And the, see what I'm saying is, and this there's a speech I played last year from Martin Luther King about why he was criticizing the U.S. involvement in Vietnam, right. and he reminded people that when the government undertakes these kinds of enterprises, they don't have money to fix things for you. Right. This is what broke up the Soviet Union. Yep. This is what bankrupted them. Fighting all these so-called wars, all these occupations which don't work. Right. Okay, and that's why they don't have money to get the jobs right for you. That's why we're suffering. Yeah. And that's why in the debt stuff is a bunch of bullshit because they'll never cut the fence. All the studies say that all the cuts that have been proposed were less than 10% of what was needed. You can't get there by solely raise. You can't raise taxes and get there. Right. You got to cut expenses, but no one. And everybody talks about program. Have you heard anybody talk about cutting defense? No. First of all, you have agencies in the U.S. government that have classified budgets. That's right. If the NSA has a classified budget, 
Then does that mean, is that calculated in the budget talks? If you have an organization where their budget is classified, how the hell I know what our budget is? It's only, uh, it's a budget that you only need to know. So if we take our budget and subtract everything out, we should be able to find what the the, uh, unclassified, but it doesn't add up, see? It never adds up. The unclassified (laughs) budgets are unclassified, so you don't even know where your money goes. Okay. It's unclassified. You're an Area 51 advocate, aren't you? You, You're all for Area 51. it's Conspiracy Wednesday. <laughs> it, See, you, y'all don't believe in aliens? Yeah, well, well, okay. Don't distract me with the alien shit. Yeah, I'm, I'm bringing it on, man. Because we get because distracted, we, we go to aliens. I'm talking about what's real. All right. Okay, what's more What's we, more we, serious? We'll be discussing religion and the pyramids. <laughs> what's a bigger threat to our system? <laughs> what? Increased debt or aliens? Well, like I said, increased debt to who? <laughs> See, I was like, don't you want, does anybody else want to know who we owe the money to? People say we owe some of the money to China. I said some. <laughs> right. right. Who did you owe it to before then? Right. And what about all the other money? Right. All right. Here's Russia television. Because the Ru- what if you go look at the foreign press, they love to talk about us. Let's take a look at this piece from Russia Television. <laughs> now, the U.S. narrowly misses a potential default, signing into law an emergency budget deal that leaves both sides of the months-long political debate disappointed. Well, the country that She's once advised fine. Russia <laughs> during its worst economic crisis failed to prepare for its man. own financial humiliation. Artist Katerina Grachova has been investigating why Washington refuses to help itself. Congress has now approved a compromise to reduce the deficit and avert a default that would have devastated our economy. The U.S. just had to swallow this bitter pill. But many still doubt it will help the patient's recovery, but will instead prove to be a poisoned chalice. Our economy is not growing at all. In fact, unemployment remains very high. Foreclosures remain very high. No recovery is taking place. And are we on a suicide mission? We may be gesturing, you know, to kind of deal with debt at the same time, make it impossible for the government to play any role to save the economy. And the economy is going down rapidly. At some point, shortly after the collapse of the Soviet Union, <laughs> Russia became an American laboratory for neoliberal economic theories. Neoliberal. But can Americans take their own advice now to deal with their own economic crisis? Live within your means, the same advice they gave us without knowing our economic and social realities. Viktor Gerashenko headed Russia's central bank in the immediate post-Soviet period. The year he took up the job, in 1992, saw the worst, four-figure inflation in Russia's history. The USSR came to an end as the communist economy was in collapse, but there was nothing to replace it with. The situation was disastrous. Foreign debt was over $100 billion, and golden foreign currency reserves were less than $50 million, which effectively means nil. Pivotal reformists of the then government remember how on America's advice, so-called shock therapy was applied. The markets might have got the therapy, but the people got the shock. Empty shelves and mass poverty. As one politician said, to move from a market to a communist economy is easy. It's like trying to turn your aquarium into fish soup. But to do the opposite is much harder. It's like trying to revive the dead fish. It took modern Russia a decade to revive its aquarium and return to economic growth, transforming the country's fortunes after the disaster of the 1990s. But with the U.S. now the patient in dire need of economic surgery, we'll soon see if the medicine they thought was good enough for a post-Soviet Russia will be fit for America. Ekaterina Grachova, RT, Moscow. Well, now remember when your President Bush referred to the New World Order. Right. You know, in that famous speech. Yeah. You know, it's a centralizing of the world's government. Oh, right. What I'm suggesting to everyone is, what if it is centralized and it focuses around the rich? Well, it's always been that way. Exactly. It's never, when someone says, if Russia says it only took us 10 years. And said so the issue is, I said, well, they basically say it will recover. Imagine the the fact that you go, it will never recover. Russia, who was primarily a military machine investing in all type of uh, uh, programs themselves and knowing that they clearly had a different point of view as it relates to economics uh, relating to consumers and I said but they bounce back right 
I said, so are we well, saying that the, well, US, the U.S. will bounce back, but how many at loss? Yeah, how many bounce? people right. get lost? How many die? Right. You know, I was reading at the chat room. I'm trying to stretch my eyes. You, know. <laughs> you can't stretch it's your eyes. It's too far, back. you guys. If you was looking at I put porn, the laptop way over. I can't. It's over. Get a big screen. I got to get this. You know, Ikea. Turn around. <laughs> anyway, PMC said that he was in job training programs. Right. Where the program was cut while he was still in the job. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm not That's laughing. Like teach, I, I'm, I'm not laughing, laughing at you, dude. too. It's like what Richard Pryor said. Brother in jail, he said he gets out, he says, well, I know how to make license plates. Now, where a man will get a job out here making license plates? I'm a license plate making mother. You're wrong. You're wrong, man. I'm just saying, look, 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 that's what I'm saying. You have no cohesiveness. Well, I wanted to bring you that piece. All right. But that's, you know, we skipped into the good news, the bad news, and other shit today. What part was the good news? I'm getting to that. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, I just want to keep it focused. It's, it's Conspiracy Wednesday. <laughs> it ain't no You know what it is? What's because Wednesday, what? we have usually not to schedule guests. Right. And that's the time I get into all the conspiracy stuff. Because, you know, you know, believe me, you guys, I got friends. You know, some of them think I'm too. Right. Mark, you're not part of the revolution. Right. You got to lead the struggle. That's right. I said, okay. And you have to do this. Did and we I, do that one? I did that right, one. Now, now, how many, you know, how many of the teachings and readings do we go back from people who played that role? And what was the reward handed off as it well, worked? Well, that wasn't. What, did, okay. what worked? What worked? What worked? Yeah. I, I, think, I, don't, I don't mind okay. the statement. I think it worked because the struggles of those people got us here today. Right. As I, a child well, that of I know. the 60s. As a child of the 60s who grew up in those times when they followed me around the store, they at the time when the police would routinely stop you right. just for going into certain parts of the, town, the city. Right. Right. No, it has changed. I credit the people who were the, the, the muckrakers, the people who challenged me, the people who inspired me. Right. Many artists, Gil Scott Heron, that's why I loved him. Right. I loved Gil Scott Heron because so, he educated me as a young man. He blew my head. He had me thinking. He had me wondering, about looking at apartheid. He had me looking around. What you just answered was he did it through his music. Well, that's what worked. That, well, that's that's what I'm right, saying. Because that's what motivated. Yeah. Now, let me tell you something else. Wrong. The hip hop as a culture. Right. At least it's a unifying force. I know that's people don't right. like some of those old folks don't like to think of that. But they are speaking but, to. But you. yes, right. Hip hop as a culture is still a unifying force amongst the youth. Right. So I definitely think that music, media. That's why we do this. That's why I'm trying so hard to get other folks in the internet television. Right. If I can get Cornell West. Right. Here, all of them. You know, if I could get some of the other folks I want access to, right? We would bring them to you, right? As you know, we've got shout outs. We've had some support from people. Tavis, right? You know, gets us into some things, right? To cover some things too. So, but we we want to be that voice for the or, for, for or, you all, or the uh, alternative, at and, least for and, the alternative. And, and, and we say this: look, if you know, if if somebody says, "Hey, I'm giving you the straight, uncut." And you can't handle the words and the texture of the words, but they're giving you the embodiment of what they believe is the truth and what's happening on a personal level. Or would you rather have it kind of homogenized, where it says, oh, it looks so real, they make everything look so wonderful. And behind them are nothing but barbarians and devils pushing out exactly what makes you calm, conservative, and passive. You have to be very careful about what message you need to learn about. No, I, you know what? I want you to have the truth. I think, unfortunately, the truth is going to make you somewhat angry. I think that comes with the territory. I think no matter, I don't know a way to bring this to you that's not painful, okay? And I'm trying to find ways to convince people because a lot of people believe in the government. A lot of people believe in the president. And when you start to criticize those things, they really get turned off. They don't want to hear it. Right. You know, they hang it to the nth degree. You can't. They really do. And, it's, and I don't want to insult them right. because a lot of people, when, when you believe in things and come to find out they're not what you think, you feel stupid. Yeah. And you don't want to admit that. Go people seek. Let me tell you, I'd have people I'd, who, Knowledge. Before, all my friends who were down there volunteering in Obama's election campaign, mm -hmm. they kind of quiet. They kind of quiet mm -hmm. because they can't admit to themselves that they wasted their time. But isn't or maybe they didn't waste their no, time. No, no, they See, didn't waste they did. their time. We agree no. we're happy to right. have a black president. Yeah, no, we, they didn't waste their time. Now, is, now, are we happy to have a mediocre black president? Well, isn't, okay. isn't that... Let's, uh, and a mediocre maybe being kind. Okay, have you had mediocre girlfriends? 
Yeah, but I made it good. <laughs> see, 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 it's the individual make, that makes it I work. I can't make Obama good. Yeah, see, I'm what you fixed I can't it. make him. I can't fix him. Yeah, you, but you fixed your situation. Because mine involves sex. I ain't, <laughs> I ain't going there. Well, Clinton knew which way to go. I ain't going there. <laughs> As I said with Clinton, too, I told Clinton, I mean, I told my mother, I said, well, she got me to vote. I said, ah, oh, no. I'm telling you, I know these people's history. I'm a solutions-oriented I, person. Well, come on. Let's get to some fun shit. Oh, all right, man. All right, you guys. take Check this out. Where is my number one source? What is my number one download source for entertaining video? None other than Mashable. You guys got to go to Mashable.com. In fact, go to Mashable.com to the video section because that's where I get a bunch of mine. Got to give a shout out to P. Cashmore, mm -hmm. you know, founder, builder of this site. Wonderful site. But this right. is where I get my videos yep. that are fun. And so we have some. And so here's one of the first ones because I know I got to make you feel better now. Yep. So here's the, one of the first ones I'm going to make you feel better with. Uh, this one because you need insanely stupid things to uh, take we, our minds off of. We just had an insane, stupid com uh, yeah, but conversation. That was too political. We either, now we need outrageous sex or comedy. <laughs> and since I don't have outrageous sex for you. <laughs> what about yesterday? Huh? That was what, comedy or was that just an experience? Uh, I think that was just comedy. That yeah, was comedy? I, I could just say this. I welcome more experiences like yesterday. It takes your mind off of what is what they call the fear factor. And uh, the fear factor is... The politics will have you going down that slippery slope. So I can't wait for you to bring up the first video, dude. Well, here's the first video. No. The first video is meant to symbolize those of us engaging in political discussions with people we love. Hmm. If you say so, man. Take a look. <laughs> All right. So that's not working. Oh, that's called the buffer, right? Shrink window. Oh, it's called two. Okay. Two talking dogs argue. How do you know they're arguing? <laughs> I just picked these damn videos, okay? I want to know. You know, y'all got to just add extra shit. You what? know, I am barely getting wait, by. You know what? Barely getting by. You know, it reminds I'm me. I'm trying to find some. My notes are all mixed up because we have a Mac video. Mac, I'm trying to. I, I can't find all my. I'm confused. Dad. No, it's like watching a basketball game at, or a football game, and the announcer or the journalist, whomever, is telling you what the person's actually saying to the referee. Although there's no mic there, nothing. He said, yeah, I know what he's saying to him. I said, How do you know this? I'm switching to a different browser. Okay. Because I might as well educate everybody as we do this. Since that wouldn't work, let's switch to Google Chrome browser. Okay. And see if I can show you the same video with Google Chrome. Right. And let's see if it'll work. Well, it should, man. Get a little buffer in there, you know. Make sure that it you know, gets ahead of itself. See? No, it's that, you know what is that damn flash? Okay, let's watch it regular size. Yeah. Come on, watch it. I, I just got It's that see. flash. Okay. I argued about politics. <laughs> Look like Mario's girlfriend trying to get him to get up and get some. They try to tell me to come to bed. I go, no. God, look at that's crazy. Mario on the couch saying hell no. As you can see, even the animals can't get along. Oh, oh God. You go, okay, see, everybody follow. Go ahead. That's what I'm saying. PMC fi figured it out. I said, it looked like Mario sitting on the couch going, hell no. I get, I, we, we did it last night. It's like married with children with four legs, man. That, I'm sorry, dude. It reminds me of you, man. You always say those stories. You always say, oh, man, I'd rather read a book. What, what did you say? <laughs> you know, y'all. All right, here's another one. 
Here's Harry Potter reimagined as a lighthearted teen video. Oh, okay. All okay. Right. All right. Maybe I could get this. I want to show it. Dude, you got to. Yeah, it's, it, you, man, it's hard, dude. You have to be careful. Huh? It, it's because maybe it's just how they set the video up. Maybe it is Flash. Maybe it is Flash. I'm, I'm not going to say it's not, man, but mm, I don't know, man. You think so? Mm, no, I just think, you know, are, that, we, are we at the, uh, at, actually at the the best of the upload itself, how they set it's, it up? No, just so everybody can know how computers messing with us, yeah, too. Yes, I know. <laughs> That's where we can have bonding. We can bond <laughs> and our relative frustration <laughs> with window. Right. Yeah. All right, watch this one. This is Harry Potter reimagined as a teen love story. Mm. I've got a really good feeling about Hogwarts. I feel it's it's the place to be tonight. Do you know what I mean? No. <laughs> Enjoying your classes, Harry? <laughs> what about your activities outside the classroom? I can't help wondering if... Oh, no, no. She's brilliant, and we're friends. But no. What you see before <laughs> you? It's a curious little potion. Hello, darling. The most powerful love potion in the world. I'm in love with her. All oh, right, fine. You're in love with her. Have you ever actually met her? <sighs> Can you introduce me? Come on, Harry. We've got a game to win. Excellent. Excuse me, I have to go oh. for it. I happen to be his girlfriend. I happen to be his friend. These girls, they're going to kill me, Harry. Harry Potter gets laid. See that girl over there? She's trying to smuggle you a love potion. Really? Hey, she's only interested in you because she thinks you're the chosen one. But I am the chosen one. Okay, sorry, kidding. That's right, Harry Potter gets laid. And to feel love's keen sting. You, you, got too, you got too much time. You got too much time. That's man. God's way of telling you. All right, man, holler, you know, holler out at Norm. He's got to exit because he's got a pink slip from uh, doing, you know, the uh, work while he's watching the show. Oh, Norm. <laughs> Sorry, dude. That scared me and shit. It's hard out there. I need Norman to keep working. You got to eat out of Cleveland. Hey, Norm, thank you for doing... Hey, if everybody knows, our <laughs> chat room is part of the whole experience of watching these shows. It's That's live right. interaction. Right. I interact as much as I can see over there. See? It's a little ass tight. <laughs> Dude. It's a little ass teeny tight. They have... Wait a minute. Let me, let me just, I okay. have to put it on... I got this in front of... Fix on the angle. I, I, no, I, Look they, at the stuff I got here in front of me. I got all of this. I know. You got a whole bunch. But, you know, there's a solution to this. I'm a solution-oriented person. They call it glasses. I got my glasses, but my eyes are bad now. Well, oh, so the glasses work? Yeah, they work. But he won't use them. Okay. <laughs> For one of the last videos here, I have a monkey playing an iPhone. Oh, here we go. You know, we love monkeys. All right, here we go. Those of you who know, we love, we're very fond of woodland creatures here. Pack Stereo. We have a wonderful gerbil collection there. <laughs> you wrong, dude. You had to go there, dude. <laughs> we're, we're, we're wonderfully involved with tiny woodland creatures, as we've shown you. Man. But here cool. is a wonderful piece of the baby monkey. The baby monkey and iPhone. <sighs> Come on, monkey. Drop the beat, monkey. Oh. What is that phone doing? I love me some monkey. Take a monkey duck. <laughs> hey, that sign that monkey. You got 750 points. <laughs> you know what? Get a girl right here. That's a Kevin. small monkey, dude. It's a miniature monkey. Got little monkey turds. <laughs> got more hair than a hundred. <laughs> PMC says he got the funk. <laughs> you know, this is God's way of showing us we have too, too much, much free time. time. Way too much, man. Way too much damn time. God. <laughs> it's 
Scratch monkey. <laughs> he get like one of my nephews. <laughs> <laughs> All right, later, Norm. I'm sorry. Hey, that's cool. I told you, you gonna, Norm's going to get a pink slip. Well, believe dude. it or not, that's the end of our good news. We didn't even do the intro. It's, I'm still frazzled because I guess. I'm right, right. That's what I'm I saying. blame it on them. No, no. I didn't. Look, Can I blame it on them? Under economic crisis, PMC said, he said, here we are watching Little Monkey. So I guess we're not really struggling, right, you guys? That we're, We are struggling. We're trying to, we're trying to cheer ourselves up. I'm trying to cheer up PMC, <laughs> struggling with all that stuff. He deserves a monkey time. <laughs> we deserve some monkey time. We've been going to get our loved ones to come over and give us some of that monkey love. Oh, that's cold, man. <laughs> this is wrong. This is wrong. <laughs>